Hey everyone, welcome to Johnny How To. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the eye distort node, which is a way that you can warp one image using the footage of another. So for instance, if you've ever seen the movie Predator, the old Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, the Predator kind of goes invisible and kind of cloaks himself against the background and blends in. And so in this particular case, we have some footage. This is when the iPhones very first came out and the, the whole model for Apple was there's an app for that. So his idea was, there's an app to make him go invisible and we're going to have him go invisible and kind of warp the imagery of this background jungle scene. So there's a few things you need to do in order to get the eye distort node working correctly. I'm going to walk you through that and also I'm going to talk about using the footage that we have here since it's been set up a particular way. So let's go ahead and jump on in and we'll work through this. All right, so first off, we have this footage that was originally on a green screen. And you can see that obviously the green is gone. He's been already despilled to take away the green and get the green spill off of his pixels himself. But rendered as a separate file was a TIFF sequence of just the cutout for his imagery. And then the background's clean as well. So what we're going to do here is if I go and look at his footage, Adam's footage, I press RGB and then A to look at the alpha channel, you see there's no alpha channel here. Well, there is, it's just black, meaning that it has no information in it that we that's useful to us. If we view the matte channel, R, G, B, and then A, this doesn't have an alpha channel either. So this can be a little confusing because usually when you see a cutout, you think of it as an alpha channel or a cutout channel or a matte channel. It is, or it can be used as that, but it's not assigned to the alpha channel yet. So the first step we need to do in order to cut out Adam's footage is to actually copy that over. And the way we're gonna do that is with the copy node. So I'm gonna go and just click in the gray space here in the node graph, press K for copy, and you copy from the A input to the B input. So I'm copying from here, I'm gonna copy the cutout to his footage here. And the defaults for the copy node is from the A input, you're copying the alpha channel and you're copying it to the alpha channel of the B input. Now again, since we already checked, we know that's not the case right now because there is no alpha channel for this footage right here. So we need to change this copy node just a little bit. So instead of copying from the A side to the B side, the alpha channel, I need to copy one of the other channels. Now I'm gonna go in and look at uh, these and it doesn't matter because they all have the same information, whether it's red, green, or blue, it's all just that black and white information. So I'll just go and use red just because it's the first one. And now you can see it's copying from the A and put the red channel and it's copied into the alpha channel of the combined version here. So if I go and view this RGB and then A, we do have the cutout here. And notice he's not cut out yet, and that's because the copy node does not pre-multiply or actually apply the cutout operation. So in order for the cutout to actually take place, I'm going to select my copy node, press tab, start to type the word pre-mult, which stands for pre-multiplication, press enter, and now he's actually cut out and can be put on a new background. And speaking of the background, we'll go ahead and put him on this jungle background here just so we can kind of see what we're dealing with. So I select the pre-mult node, press M for merge, a input for above, B input for below or for background, and I'll go ahead and put him above the background. It's a little bit small in this particular scene, so I'm gonna go ahead and after the pre-mult add a transform node. So I'll select the pre-mult, press T for transform, and I'll go ahead and move him into general position. And just so we can see the effect a little bit more magnified, I'm gonna probably make him a little bit bigger than I would otherwise, but this should illustrate the idea pretty well. Okay, so now we have him. Against the background, I press H to fill him to the viewer size here. If we go and play back, we see he is animating against the background doing his predator thing, but he's not invisible yet. In order to do that, we need to use the eye distort node and we need to set that up in a particular way. So the eye distort node itself relies on contrast of the imagery that's warping the background. Meaning that in this case, it's gonna be Adam that's gonna be warping the background. And you basically want as much contrast as you can get so you can differentiate between the dark areas and the light areas. So if I press R for red, I can see there's a good amount of contrast between his skin tones and his uh, shirt and his jeans and his hair is everything and everything. Green, a little bit less. Blue, probably the least. It doesn't mean the blue or the green might not work well, but at least for the most pop, I'm gonna go ahead and try and use the red channel. So in order to get everything to the red channel, I'm gonna use a shuffle node. So I'll click down on the gray here. I'll type the word shuffle and select shuffle channel. I'm gonna go ahead and plug this into after I already have him transformed and cut out because I don't, I want the size of him when he's warping the background to match the size that I have him on the background here. So I want the warped version to match the version that uh, has him just looking normal. So off of the Transform here, I'm gonna plug in my shuffle. I'll just go and give a little room here. I'm gonna go ahead and name this 
R in the label here, just so I know that I'm gonna shuffle everything to the red channel. And the way that the, sh the shuffle node works is, this is what you bring in, and this is what you spit out. So I'm bringing in the red channel and outputting it as the red channel. The green, in is the green, out is the green, in is the blue, out is the blue, alpha and alpha. If I want to adjust this, I just check the boxes. So since the red channel is why I'm interested in, I'm just going to say, okay, I want to shift everything to the red channel. You can see his arm here at least. So if I click red for all these, you can see that he has just that black and white version based on the red channel information. If I change my channel, R, G, B, or A, it all has the same look to it. So now I know I have everything shuffled to the red channel. All right, so from here, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, the iDistort node, if I go ahead and add this real quick so you can see, it relies on something called U and V channels. And these are channels that don't exist at this moment, but basically it's going to distort it horizontally and distort it vertically. In this case, we're gonna use the same channel, we're just gonna use the red channel information, but we need to create that channel for the iDistort node to use. And the way you do that is whatever you distort or where you want to distort it. So I want to distort the background. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it into my background as a separate branch. And right now you can see nothing's happening because, well, even if I pump up the UV scale, nothing's happening because, well, it's not, doesn't have anything to distort with. And remember, it's looking for those UV channels in order to do the distorting. And you can choose different channels, but let's go ahead and do this properly and create the UV channels that it's expecting. So in order to do this, I'm gonna go ahead and create a shuffle copy node. And I'll, I'll spit this out on its own here. I'll just plug in the one input when I'm copying from and now I'll go ahead and hover over here. I'm gonna say I'm gonna copy it to this background right here. And I'll actually do this as a separate branch just to make it a little bit more simple and easy to understand. And I'll go ahead and call this UV creation. All right, so in this shuffle copy node, and just think of this RGBA, think of that as a palette. So if you guys know what a palette is, it's something that you would store things on when you transport in a truck or a plane or whatever platform. And then just imagine you're putting all kinds of paint buckets on top of that. And in this particular one with regular imagery, you have a paint bucket that's red, a paint bucket that's green, that's blue, and then alpha, which is kind of breaks the, the analogy, but is kind of invisible ink, I guess you could say. Basically what we want to do is we want to take the red channel information from the shuffle node and we want to take that information from the red channel from that palette that has the red and green information or whatever it is and put it onto a new palette that's called distortion or, or UV or whatever it might be or distort and have those UNV buckets filled with the red channel information. So hopefully this will make sense as I go through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, instead of RGBA being the output, I'm gonna click on new, and now I can create custom channels for Nuke to work with. So you can name this anything you want, but you probably wanna name it something that's gonna make sense. So I'm gonna go ahead and name this distort, and I'll call this distort.u and distort.v. Now I, can, I had already created this earlier, that's why it automatically uh, filled in the U and V there. And it might not let me create it again, actually, because it's already been created. Let's go and click OK. OK. And so now you can see that I'm inputting, since I checked these boxes, the red channel information from the one input and outputting it to the U and the V on the, again, at least in this analogy, the distort palette. So now that that's done, I can go ahead and connect my iDistort node to this version that's coming from my background to the shuffle copy. And now I can go ahead and distort my background. And so if I go and double click on this, I need to tell it what channels do I wanna distort? Well, I wanna distort the red, green, and blue pixels, meaning the image of the jungle. And the channels that I wanna distort it using is the distort palette that I just created. So I'll click distort. And now when I up my UV scale, you'll start to see that it's warping the imagery based on the luminance, the black and white that we have in the red channel here. So if I go and view this, and I'll go ahead and pump this up more. So the slider only goes up to 100, but remember if you hover in front of or to the side of any number and press up, it's going to increment that number. So if I go and up this to say, you know, a very, very high number here, higher than I'd probably want to actually go, and I go ahead and go full screen on this, I'll press H to fill again and play this back. 
when it's in motion, it's a lot easier to see you actually do have him animated against this background and kind of looks like he's cloaked. Again, kind of like going back to that Predator comparison of where it's almost like you're seeing through the person, but it's still rippling the imagery behind it. If I go and place back at regular speed, it doesn't look too, too bad, especially for such a simple effect, and it renders really, really fast as well. So the one little last bit that I'm going to do to make this look a little bit nicer is let's go ahead and have him go from looking normal on the background. And as he starts to crouch down, he goes invisible. So it's like he's, he's enabling the effect. So right here is where he's starting to crouch down. So around frame 34, 35. So I'm going to go ahead and do a dissolve node, which lets you blend between the zero input and blend over to the one input. And so here I'll go ahead and just around frame 35 and the which slider tells you which one you want to show. Do you want to show, let me make sure I'm doing this. Do you want to show the zero input, which is him on the background, or do you want to show the one input that shows him invisible? You can see I can kind of toggle between. So I'm going to keyframe that. So around frame 34, 33, I'll go ahead and key, set a keyframe. So I'll click on the curve and say set key and the which is set to zero. And I'll go ahead and as he's starting to slow down and is crouching down about right here, I'll go ahead and set the witch to one. And you notice as I adjust this slider, this is going to kind of change from this being lit up to this being lit up as far as the pipe. So you can kind of see it blends over from one to the other. And of course, if I go to my dope sheet, I can see there's two keyframes there for the dissolve node under the witch slider. And I can see in my curve editor, it's here as well. So if I go and place back, Let's go ahead and click on play. We have him kind of merging to go in invisible as he's crouching down. I'll go and go full screen on that so we can see a little bit easier. We have kind of this fun little effect to where it's kind of engaging there. If I wanted to have that be a little bit smoother in the animation, like where it's easing into that, I can go ahead and in my curve editor select this guy and kind of like eases an after effect. So just say, okay, have this kind of decelerate into position there and have it start to accelerate into the transition here and it gives you a little bit smoother kind of an eased result so i'll go ahead again go back a little bit go full screen play this back and the animation should be a little bit smooth this time around so it starts a little bit slow and then ends a little bit slow as well and that is the basics of the Idistort node. So if you imagine you can use this for all kinds of things. So say you have water drops you want to have hitting a puddle, but there wasn't really rain. You can use some water drops that you recorded and go ahead and distort that footage or in a fountain or anything like that. So when there's a heat coming off of a flame, it kind of distorts the air around it with the gas and everything. So you can go ahead and use fire to give that kind of fire ripple above a really hot surface. So a lot of really, really cool ways you can use this. And the best part about it is you can use regular imagery. You don't have to have any crazy 3D rendered imagery. And it renders, since it's just distorting the imagery of one image using another image, it renders very relatively fast. So you can see here that, and this is running off of my slower kind of network attached device that this actually is rendering pretty darn fast. And so it's a nice compromise instead of having to do a full 3D effect. So hopefully this was helpful to you. I'm sure you can see a lot of different ways you can use this. The exact same kind of effect and setup inside of After Effects and Fusion as well. So this is not limited to just Nuke. Hopefully this was really helpful to you and I'll see you in the next Johnny How To.